And look at this beautiful spice rub. I'm gonna gently lay this down inside the pan, sauteing it so that both sides are nice and golden brown. And then I'll pop it in the oven to finish it up. You'll notice I haven't used any eggs or breadcrumbs. The proteins will naturally bind when cooked. I'm gonna keep this seasoning simple. Just a little bit of salt, some pepper, Simple. I want to taste this elk. I don't want to hide any of the flavors. I want to taste it. I put all that work into getting it. I don't want to hide those flavors. I want to taste it. Incredible finish. Is there anything simpler than cooking in one pan? Whole roasting this line caught wild trout with all of these vegetables for me is the most perfect way to honor this incredible fish. This is my first black bear. We're here hunting on public land, and let me tell you, this is a night I'm never gonna forget. What the old timers taught me, it came true tonight, and we got this beautiful, beautiful black bear. Good evening and welcome to Surefire Wednesdays with the Outdoor Chef. My name is Jonathan Collins and this is my son Bailey. Hi everybody, how's it going? Dakota's going to be joining us shortly, but first I've got to tell you why you have to stick around. Tonight we're giving away a cast iron tripod and that beautiful cast yeah. iron... What's it called? I keep wanting to call it again. Dutch oven. oven. I'm Dutch a chef. Oven. I should know this. That beautiful cast iron Dutch oven from Lodge. Lodge is yep. made in America. It's tough as nails. And I'm telling you, when we went to bear camp, when we went to deer camp, to our, to, when we hunted uh, whitetails, yeah. and when we went and we went deep up north, we took this with us. So if you're going, you're going out into the wild. Yeah. Hey, I can't talk tonight. We're going out <laughs> no. in the wild. Uh, you got to have this at, at your camp uh, site. So all you have to do is like the broadcast, share the broadcast, and then do us a favor and tag somebody who would love this, and that yeah. might be yours. We're going to choose it uh, before our next uh, broadcast. Our next broadcast. This, uh, this Dutch oven is perfect. If you're ever going on uh, a hunt, say, for bear or anything like that, and you have uh, small game animals open such as grouse, for around the campfire late at night, say you weren't quite so successful that day, and you got but you got a couple of grouse. This is perfect just to toss those in there, and you have a great little Dutch oven to cook in all in one pan. Makes it uh, camp cleanup easy. It's not so fun when you got like 30 dishes at camp and you gotta go stick your hands in the cold river. It's that's right, that's right. Not fun. So tonight we've got some exciting recipes. First of all, we've got a drink. So we've been pairing drinks uh, now for the past few weeks because we know when you're making some kind of a main, you'd love to have a drink. And to tell you about it, here's my son, <laughs> Dakota. Good, uh, Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Surefire Wednesdays. I know that we're uh, pumped up tonight, man. We are. We're, we're right. finally. Look at this set. Look at this set. We've been waiting. This is the outdoors. Yep, we've been waiting. We've been seeing these ribs sitting in our freezer, and man, let me tell you, we've been waiting to yep. cook these babies up. Yep. I actually had to break these ribs after through about an inch block of ice on the very bottom of the freezer. Oh, and I yeah. was like, let's do ribs. So I had to get up there. I actually used a wrench to break out the ice. So that's the first thing. So in thawing these ribs, cold running water, yep. anything that you're going to take out of the freezer, thaw it in cold running water, slight trickle. It'll thaw them faster. And then keep in mind that it's food safe. You're keeping them below four degrees, which means you can uh, cook them with yep. confidence. Or 40 degrees Fahrenheit. 
You know, yeah. we always talk about Celsius, but we know that a lot of our Canadians viewers are Fahrenheit. <laughs> Got to remember Fahrenheit. <laughs> just talking about your drink. Yeah, today I'm doing a summer sangria, and I mean, look at all these ingredients. This just gets you excited, right? Strawberries, blackberries, limes, lemon. We got it all here, right? Uh, yes. And then we're Powerful doing, summer flavors. Yeah, we're going to be doing some of this gorgeous red wine, triple sec brandy. You're going to want to see this later on, man. Like, it's going to be incredible and yeah. refreshing for your summer get-togethers. And then I'm going to be doing the ribs. So we've smoked the ribs. Because we're doing this in real time, I'm going to talk you through smoking, and then I'm going to talk you through and make this beautiful dry rub. Mm -hmm. It's really critical to get flavor deep inside. You want to get that nice little smoke ring from the apple wood, and then I'm going to teach you how to make this beautiful oh. cast iron <laughs> cornbread. So this cornbread is deadly simple, but at using it to mop up up that uh, beautiful barbecue oh, sauce yeah, from the ribs is just perfect. This is like one of my favorites, man. But where we're going to start tonight <laughs> is where if you it. if you see me limping a little bit, it's not because I'm getting old, okay? And <laughs> listen, Nate old. and Tim, I don't want you guys laughing at me either, all right? We were at the gym and we we're training, right, last yep, night. Yep, last night we were so training. So we, believe it or not, we we're training uh, with our bows. There's my Rain 7, by the way, right behind you. We'll talk a bit, a little bit about that later. Yep. But then a uh, basketball game broke out. But I was playing basketball, <laughs> basketball and my bare feet. showed up out of nowhere. I don't know where it came from. But my Achilles now, I need a little bit of rehab. But anyway, talking about rehab, yeah. this drink that Bailey has oh, is yeah. just what you need. So I know that you're training right now. You want to get ready for hunting season. If you haven't started, yep. this is our call out to you. Yeah. Because we've I, started too, eh? Uh, like, eh, we started like... Four or five days ago, yeah, and I mean yeah. we're a little late to the post because we're, we're busy too. Eh? Yeah, yeah. I mean like yeah, we're open busy. sheep, pronghorn, elk, whitetail. You know you got to be in shape when you get out into the bush and you're after these animals and you get one down and you harvest one. You need to be able to get it out of the woods, right? Yeah. Yeah. And to that point, everyone sometimes gets a little busy and things kind of need to slow down. Yeah, and yeah. even if you can't, what you need to do is you need to be able to get back in that gym, back hiking a lot faster. Yep. And this uh, BCAA formula from Mountain Ops is great for that. Yeah, yeah. The BCAA stands for Branch Chain Amino Acids. And basically what that does is it just helps your muscles recover so much faster instead of a <laughs> two or three day recovery time. It's, it's about one and then you're right back in that gym and you're good to go. I thought it was uh, break, uh, control, after appetite. That's no. what I thought it was. <laughs> no. Okay. No. So anyway, Bailey's got a really good recipe. And yep. as he starts, uh, talk us through some of these ingredients. Yeah, so uh, the first ingredients, because the flavor for this uh, one I have is green apples. So I was thinking immediately with green apple, you got to have green apples. The thing about green apples is they're full of water. So this is a post-workout shake. So all you got to do, these are great, but they're full of water. Rehydration after you're done a great workout. They're also full of fiber. And they're a great source of energy. I'm also going to throw a lemon in there. Lemons are great. They brighten up your day, especially if you like working out in the morning like I do. And then, to top it all off, I'm going to add ginger. Ginger is a really sweet heat instead of that kind of that... Like, like the, the capsicum from yeah. peppers. Yeah, but it gets, it gets your engine running, yeah, right? Your metabolism as yeah, well. Absolutely. It really helps. But uh, the thing is, people don't... You can, can't exactly sit there in the morning and eat five straight apples. So the best thing you can do is to get a juicer. You juice the apples, you get all those things, and another important thing, leave the skin on. An apple, when you have the skin on, has 3.6 grams of fiber. When you peel it, it only has 1.6. So every time you take down that next layer, it's kind of like cutting the crust off bread. You lose so much nutrition and all of that. So the first thing you gotta do is you're gonna split these apples in half to make them more uh, able to fit in the head. Then the quarter them again. And uh, I actually don't, what did you say that the seeds and apples have, Dan? Well, if you collect a whole bunch of them, it actually has a, a poison in it, right? Yeah. So you got to you gotta make sure to take those take out. Take them out. Take them out, that's right. And right. Uh, and so when you juice them and add a little bit of heat, um, that uh, that actually, it actually activates that. So you want to make sure you take the What's seeds out. What's it called? Out. It literally escaped my mind. Cyanide. Cyanide, cyanide. thank cyanide you. Cyanide is what it so is. A little bit of cyanide in there. Yeah, so the, what you want to do is you want to just run your paring knife. Another great thing is a paring knife to have in your kitchen. You want to run that along the apple to get those seeds out. Uh, if you're doing one serving, I'd say you probably only need two or three apples. They get a lot of juice out of apples. A lot of things you can juice and you only get a little bit, but with apples, you get a lot of juice out of that. And same thing with the ginger and lemon. And while I'm doing this, I'll show you a cool thing. The thing people always see lemons and you don't think you can get much out of it. Take your peeler, if you have a juicer, and just go like this, and just peel that, what is that, the rind? 
Yep. The, right. Yeah, the zest. The zest. Down, yeah, taking that pith off. So what you want to make sure to do when you're juicing the lemons is to get that pith off. Otherwise, you'll have that real bitterness that comes from the lemon. So what Bailey's going to do is he's going to continue to prep this. Now, I want to show you this. I'm going to start getting ready for my cornbread. So what I've got is I've got cast iron, and now it's nicely seasoned. I've just used a little bit of corn oil. Now, since uh, cornbread uses cornmeal, I'm going to use corn oil. It has a nice high smoke point, and seasoning the cast iron before I heat it up. Come on around here. I'll show you where I'm going to put it. So I'm actually going to preheat this. You can see that I've got my coyote smoker going here. Uh, it's about 450 degrees. We're going to let that cool off just slightly. But I'm actually going to take and I'm going to preheat that cast iron so that when, when it comes time, one of the things about preheating is I'll get this incredible layer of crust. And when you look at my cornbread, I've got inside, but it's got that nice crust, crumbly crust on the outside, which makes it just beautiful. How are you doing there, babe? Good. Uh, so I just started, uh, get, I just finished my two apples, I'm trying to go fast without cutting myself here. I'm not, as, I'm not as good as him though. He's been doing, how long have you been a chef for, Dad? Too long. Too long. So, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start talking about Bailey's prep and we'll come back to you in a second. What we're going to do is we're going to start with this spice mixture. Now, I've got some incredibly <laughs> powerful flavors here. And one of the things about making a really good dry spice rub, you can buy them, absolutely. There's lots on the market. But if you want to make your own, what you want to do is you want to start off with whole seeds. So I've got whole allspice berries, whole fennel seeds, whole coriander, and here is whole cumin. The thing about getting them whole, first of all, they'll store longer and they will store more fresh. But here's the best part. So you take a pan. Now I've got this screeching hot. So it's cast iron pan. I'm literally going to take and I'm going to put three tablespoons in. And what happens is that the heat begins to activate the natural oils inside those whole seeds. And when we grind them up, it makes it that much more potent. So I've got some allspice berries going in. And I've got fennel seed. All these flavors are really common in barbecue dry rub, but you rarely see the whole seeds and you rarely get a chance to smell what each one of them smells like on their own. And it really helps you to appreciate what's going on. So with all those seeds in there now, I'm literally just going to spread that out in the pan and I'm going to wait until that starts to smoke. Yeah, I think I'm ready to go here, guys. You ready to go? So the thing I like to start with is always the apples, since it is an apple drink. So all you got to do is take the top off, start your juicer. And I want you to look real close here as I start to drop these apples in. And this is equivalent of half an apple. Watch how much juice comes out of half an apple. Watch this. Just incredible. Nothing left over. Like Take a look up here. You just left with all this little pulp that's up here. And it's literally taken everything out of that apple and shoved it down in there. So you can imagine every morning, having to eat, this is three yep. apples, eat three apples. First of all, you're not going to be able That's to do right. it. Yep. And if you see this, look how much juice is coming out of these apples. After a workout, oh, yeah. you start off in the morning, you're going to get three hours in your morning and you're going to be dead. You're going to want to take a nap and you're going to be starving. Yep. And the last thing you want to do is shove more food in your mouth. We're losing apples. <laughs> it's crazy. One of the most incredible things I found when I started juicing carrots and apples and ginger is the amount of energy you get purely from all the juice. It's just like taking an energy drink and timesing it by three without the jitters. It's just like your brain works yeah. better. And I mean, a, from a workout standpoint, your body, I'm sure, is just working yeah. at an elevated level to the point of just yeah. pure. Yeah, so you guys are telling us we okay. should see results after the next few weeks, hey. are you guys? You should definitely see yes. results. Well, well, yes, we should well, see, see those results. This is the if full lemon. Many, Watch this juice come out of this. You gotta lemon. have. Oh, yeah. Look, look at that. that. Effortless. And then the last thing I'm going to do is this little, I always use about a thumb sized piece of ginger. Ginger is very hot, but it's also very sweet. So you yep. can do this to taste really. It depends on how much you like. If you, you like a lot of heat, in there, throw it in there, man. Ginger's in there. Shut that off. That heat really boosts up your metabolism. And I mean, if you're working out and you know, you need to get that metabolism yep. going, eating a yep. bunch, lots of protein. Especially with this, these branch ch chain amino acids are great, especially if you're on a diet. Because oh, yeah. what happens when you're on a diet, your body actually starts to eat your muscle away because the thing it's starving for is amino acids. So what you got to do is if you're on a diet, if you give your body extra amino acids, because it can't really produce that much yep. of its own, is it stops that synthesis and then gets you into it. So what I'm going to do, 
So I'm gonna add a scoop of this stuff right into this now cup. What's this stuff taste like? This this is honestly it's delicious. It's green apple flavor, oh, okay. so it's good. So I'm gonna pour that right in. <laughs> We're getting applefied now. We're getting applefied now. <laughs> Lots of fiber, boys. Lots of fiber. Lots of fiber. Toss that on your mixer. Turn that on. Let it go for a few seconds. You don't need it too long just to mix up those ingredients. Shut that off. That smells good, man. Well, you have no idea. Wait till you try it. Because this stuff's amazing. Put oh, you, you mean on. like, I'm going to try your drink first the way Dad always tries my drinks first. Yes, that's the way it's going to go. Because his drink's always alcoholic. <laughs> try that, man. Try that. Now, is this pre or post workout? Because I feel workout. like I should go do a workout <laughs> right now, workout. man. That tastes delicious. Honestly, you take one sip of a juicing, and honestly, your eyes feel brighter. You yep. feel like, you literally feel like you're awake. And the amazing thing about that is you use like a, you know, about an inch size piece of ginger. And like for me, I'm not even tasting the heat there at all. So, I mean, really the amount of ginger you can put in there is incredible. And like you said, that heat, I just love that heat from ginger. It's just a sweet heat, not like capsicum heat. Where you feel the burning on your tongue, it's just an overall heat. What you got going over here now? Have a quick look at these. Yeah, so these are start, starting to be fragrant. Now, oh, yeah. I want to talk to you a little bit about this procedure and how we were able to accomplish this. In a minute, I'm going to grind this, but I want you to have a look at what we did in here. I want to give a little bit of the ending away right here at the beginning. So you can see these, are, they've been completely oh, smoked. Yeah. And you can see that beautiful. Now, we're going to slice these apart. But this is the key to our technique, is that all of that beautiful sauce is captured in the bottom. Yep. That's molasses, brown sugar, honey, and most importantly, we've been to in there as well. I'm going to leave those covered up. Now, while this is heating, we're going to start talking about and making our cornbread. Oh, yeah. So I want to get it in that smoker because yep. it's going to it's going to cook in just the right amount of time. People are going to think we have a fascination with pan sauces. We make them in the kitchen. We make them in tin foil. Exactly. I love <laughs> pan sauces. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with some all-purpose flour. And I'm going to try to not make a giant mess here. That's it. Now, I have to, little side note here. Bay, show those farm fresh eggs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, those farm fresh eggs, those are from the dearest, sweetest woman in the world, Mrs. Verkes, my, uh, my best friend's mom. And from the Verkes farm, those are farm fresh eggs. I know she delivered them just oh. before the broadcast. Those are spectacular. Man, there's so, nothing like farm fresh eggs. There's nothing like farm fresh eggs. You can eggs. bake with them. Literally, they bake like nothing else. Even, and an omelet's even better, I mean, man. Omelet's even better. So a, a cup uh, a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour. The nice thing about making cornbread is it really uses a lot of ingredients that you have around. And uh, all you have to do is have a little bit of cornmeal on hand. Mm. Cornmeal is beautiful golden cornmeal. Look at that. Oh, man, I love cornmeal. So beautiful. Cornmeal in. Really so easy to take camping with you oh, as well. Yeah. Cornmeal, yes. flour. We literally, all that. whenever we go hunting, we take these ingredients with us and we always make cornbread. Oh, you know like, what? Let me show you. Grab that while I'm, I keep. I'll show you how we take them with us. It's awesome. So, and then I've got baking powder here. We're just giving my wife it have. My wife's a pastry chef. She gives me heck all the time because my measuring is a little bit uh, rough and dirty so you say oh you'll never take all these spices you'll never take all these things out into the woods well this look how we, small it is look how small this is we now take you this. might think this is for uh, <clears throat> sodas, sodas but uh keep them cold when you're going to the beach you know but we actually put all our spices in here look at all these beautiful little jars and we have everything that you could ever need on a campsite to make any of, literally any of the dishes. So let's go through here. Let, let me see. What do we yeah, got? We, we got, got there. starting there, we've got cardamom seed. We've got uh, chili pepper, uh, cumin seed. We've got grain, uh, whole grain salt. We've got coriander. That's, uh, oh man, that's that habanero, ground habanero. Oh, yeah. And then uh, fennel seed, uh, allspice, cinnamon, black pepper. This is paprika and star anise. How's that for a grouping of spices? No excuses, anybody. Let, you're mother doesn't have that spice rack i'm telling you right now so anyway back to these dry ingredients uh so i need a uh, half cup of sugar so again these are very simple ingredients really easy to put this together if you've ever wanted a really great cornbread recipe shh, i'm gonna give you a secret okay so the key is all the dry ingredients in first 
and then notice I'm using a whisk and watch what happens. As I use the whisk, it incorporates, it's gonna evenly incorporate all of those ingredients. I wanna make sure to get the baking powder, the baking soda, and everything evenly distributed before I add any of the liquid. That look good already? Yeah, that looks incredible. So if we're making this now, does that mean I can eat some of that? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and try <laughs> some. While I uh, have you guys here, while I have the camera, I want to make another side note. This is a uh, herb crust we made, uh, was it, a couple weeks herb back. Salt, yeah. The herb salt, yeah. If yeah. you remember, actually, Bailey, uh, when we come back, I want you to go through some of our previous recipes. If you go to the Botex site or to mm -hmm. the, uh, the Outdoor Chef YouTube, you will be able to see all of it. We've got about a dozen previous broadcasts, yep. and we've got everything from wild turkey. Well, I'll let Bailey go yeah, through yeah, that. Yeah, we'll go through them all. I mean, everything basically that's come into season and gone over the last year there's a recipe there for it okay come over here this yeah, is what we wanted to see have a look at this so you see that smoking now that's Take exactly what we want see that smoke so what's happening right now is all of those they're, become, they're toasted and they're literally they're coming to life now where is that going it's going to go right in to my mortar and pestle so this mortar and pestle has got that rough inside, and what this does, yeah, it's hot, man. It's really hot. Be careful. That, that's the one great thing about cast iron. You'll hear us talk about it all. You tip it right out of the one end, and you'll be, just make sure, is it going to be too hot? You got it? No, I got Do it. Do it quick, because it's hot. In it goes. Look at that. Good Woo. stuff. Excellent. I told you it was hot. So you see all that smoke? Now, you might think, okay, well, I'm going to let that cool off. But no, it's actually when it's good and hot like that that you want to activate that heat. Now, the first thing you got to do, you got to start to pound that down a little bit. Look, Look at that. that. Look at that coming That's out of incredible. there. Come on, if you're looking for flavor, That's that it. is flavor. I mean, if you guys could smell this right now. Oh. Now, this yeah, this is not your I mom's like, potpourri I either. I feel like I could eat that. No, Straight this up. is... This is gnarly. This coughing? I'm <laughs> coughing, yeah. I literally, look at this. This might start a fire. Oh, man. <laughs> He's going to lose it. <laughs> he can't eat Hold on a second. I need a drink. I need a recovery drink. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, I see man, what, what you mean. That's good, <laughs> man. I'll tell you what. You're trying to have a drink. Oh. Look at this. It's like working out. We're relaying here. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. Oh man, that drink is good. So, in all seriousness, if you want to revolutionize your dry rubs, oh, yeah. you'll get to literally go to the local store, yep. go to your local market, and find <laughs> find those whole spices. Get yourself a two dollar painting mask when you do it, though. That's right. <laughs> or a sheet to put over your head. No, that would make it worse. I know. <laughs> you'll be infusing. And then you just work that until you get into a consistency. Myself, I like to leave it a little bit more grainy, not to a complete powder. You can get spice grinders that turn it right into a powder, but I love the presentation and just leaving, you know, those coriander seeds and that cumin just a little bit more whole. It's this also is, fun honestly, getting back into the kitchen with the grinders and oh, all yeah. of that. Well, you're so in touch with the food yep. this way. This is the way you get connected to your food. Number one, when somebody says, oh, my God, what did you put in that spice rub? You're like, oh, well, I put whole yep. allspice berries and fennel. And they're like, what? That? Show me that. <laughs> and so that's what makes food exciting. It's what makes your uh, food unique. And you may ask, like, how do you do this when you're in the outdoors, right? If you go back, and we did a recipe for pigeon right on a riverside, and what yeah. we did... Did you just take, when you take your cast iron out there with you, you toss them in, toast it the same way we did. You yeah. just find a rock or whatever is heavy enough to grind it, and you just sit there and pound it until it turns into a powder. It's not so fun having a chef as a dad in the outdoors, because we have to train just to carry his cast iron in our backpack hey, but it's wherever worth it. we it's go. It's worth it, man. <laughs> Just be grateful, boy. <laughs> okay, so now the next thing. Next thing, excuse me. Um, here we go. So now we've got those beautiful whole spices ground up. Let's have a look at what we're talking about here. You can see what Dakota is talking about. Some, no, 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 it's absolutely spectacular. But now here's the next step. So I've got this beautiful chili powder. That's going in. And then I've got some gorgeous paprika. That sweet Hungarian paprika. Oh my gosh, I love those sweet Hungarians. This stuff is gorgeous. And then watch this come together. It's what I love. You ready? You just start mixing. Look at this. Oh yeah. That is incredible. You put that on anything. 
Could be chicken, could be pork, could be beef, but I'm telling you, this venison, it's going to sing. There we go. Okay, spice rub done. Now, I think we got to get back to our, now that that's finished, I think we got to get back to our cornbread. So let's have a quick look here. We got a, a few raindrops here, so we got a little, just bear with us for a minute, we got a little bit of uh, thunderstorm starting to come in. There's never a dull moment. How's our feed there? We're good. We're good? Okay, good. So, <laughs> our, uh, we're, because we're in a remote location here, we've actually got this uh, really great new system, and it just got completely doused with water, so we know that it's waterproof too, which is great. That brings me to a new point, which is, when our hunting season comes up, Dakota and Bailey and I, we're going to be coming to you live, cooking as we're hunting, which is going to be so exciting for us because, yes, we love to cook something like this. Like, we know, just like you, our freezer's full. Oh, yeah. We've got all different types of meat. we got black bear, we got venison, we got mule deer. we got all kinds of great things. But when it comes fresh, when you're having it right there at oh, camp, there like is it. nothing like it. There's nothing more gratifying than yeah. that moment. When we did it for black bear, I mean, when we were up for spring black bear, we, we took the bear, harvested it that night. We did all our quartering and butchering. And that night, man, we enjoyed some nice, what did we yeah. have again? We cooked up a nice lag roast from yeah, the bear. Roast. And man, there was nothing like it. Fresh. It was good. Right. It was his first bear, so he had to take the time. Yep. It's like 12 o'clock at night. we got to be up in the morning to go fishing. And he's like, you got to let it cook. you got to <laughs> let it cook. He was already asleep. He's asleep. He's I was asleep. sweet. She's to the wind. Yep. Let's not talk about that right now, though. Uh, let's talk <laughs> right, about liquids. Talking, I'm changing the subject. Uh, so all the dry ingredients now, we, we made that beautiful spice rub. I'm loving that. It smells incredible. Set smells amazing. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah. So if you think about that dry rub, now those spices are all activated. Now when you rub that on the meat, it's going to get deep inside the meat. Plus, with this technique of flipping it over and bathing, bathing it in that beautiful sauce, all those spices are going to be in your barbecue sauce. Yes, we have a question. Um, not a question, but we have a couple people loving the log bowl. Okay. And Mike yeah. said, would like to see you guys do a white tail hunt and then cooking a few different cuts of the venison at camp. Assuming you get a deer. Oh, we will definitely oh, get a deer. Oh, 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 you know what? As a matter of fact, who said that? Mike. Mike. Well, Mike, it just so happens that we have a little video roll that yeah. we'd like to show you right now of our last venison <laughs> hunt. And uh, actually, no, we were extremely grateful. Um, you'll see that in this video. Uh, I'm actually hunting with the Rain 7. So this, uh, this is the Rain 7. And for me, this was, and this is what I was practicing with last night before I started playing basketball. But for me, the setup of this, I was set at 60 pounds on this, um, and 25 feet in a tree stand, and it was my first whitetail, uh, unbelievable experience as a new hunter. And for those of you who don't know, we are, uh, we are new hunters. So uh, we're experienced chefs, but for us, every one of these incredible dishes is it, we're creating in real time. Yep. So uh, Dakota, are we ready to cue that up? Okay, have a, have a quick watch. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this. Do whatever it takes to set me free. I do everything to get what I need. I do whatever it takes to set me free. Got him. My first white tail. The rain seven. That was so smooth. I felt like in that moment that there was no distance between the trigger, the string, my arrow, and that beautiful, beautiful buck. The time is now or never Cause nothing lasts forever
So you can see there, Mike, what an incredible experience that was. I don't know if you caught that at the end, but you could actually hear my heartbeat. Now, I had a lavalier mic on, and the one thing that is undeniable is that when, when that whitetail comes into your space, okay, into your zone, it comes in. uh, you know, you know what's going down. It's happening, and it's at that moment, honestly, that it completely changes you. One thing I can tell you, if you are if you haven't uh, hunted, uh, you know, if you're not an archer, if you haven't taken this opportunity to, uh, to hunt whitetail, I'm telling you what, it's a life-changing experience. And, okay, back to cooking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but so... thanks for provoking us, Mike. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and provoke us all you want. Now, just a quick reminder that we want to show... Let's, let's show them this uh, tripod yeah, real yeah. quick. We want to show you what you can win tonight. So remember, like this broadcast. Share the broadcast. Tag a friend, and please tell me why we should send you this incredible tool. So you see here, this is a telescopic rod, fully adjustable, so you can change the different heights of it. The nice thing is it comes in a nice little kit, easy to carry in, easy to pack in, chain, and then this, you can see, this has had some miles on it. Nice thing about this, you can cook in it. And then uh, if you need to use it as an oven, you just set some of the coals on top. This is the way Lodge designed it. Cast iron, bulletproof, yeah. and we'd love to give this to you. Yeah. So one, please like and share. And one thing I want to try, and I want to try it actually when we're on one of our live hunts, is I've seen they take that pot, and as when you're fishing on the beach, you make, dig a hole, put a fire at the bottom, and then bury the thing, yeah. and then cover it back up with sand and let it cook under the sand. Oh yeah, I've seen be that. Great. I want to try that. So this is buttermilk, and for me, this is one of the secrets. You got to use buttermilk, that beautiful, acidic, buttery buttermilk. Yum. And then I've got corn oil, using corn oil, because, of course, we're using cornmeal. So we're keeping all the same flavor profile. Cornmeal in, or corn oil in. And then, how about these farm fresh eggs? Oh, yeah. Thank watch, you, Mrs. Verkest. Watch the difference in the eggs. Too. Look at these You'll babies. See the eggs, how different Let's they are. have a look at these. Oh, yeah. Look how orange the, oh, Those are beautiful. Is. Those are from, from some well fed chickens. We know what they're fed, too, down at the farm there. <laughs> okay, uh, now here's the best part honey, clover honey, local honey. You know, this is so good for you. Find, don't, don't buy stuff that came from somewhere else. Buy it local. Find something local. Find somebody who makes this golden nectar locally. Honey in. Beautiful honey. And then we need just a little bit of butter. Now, one of the things I have to tell you about preheating the pan is your pan is going to be super, super hot. The nice thing is it cooks quick, but don't turn your back on it, okay? So we're going to put about three tablespoons of butter in there, and I'm just going to bring that together. So while I do... I think it's time for uh, Dakota to make his drink. Make a drink? Yep. So I'm literally just going to begin incorporating this. And Dakota, okay. we will uh, we'll watch. You feeling thirsty? I'm feeling thirsty. Let's. Uh, Hopefully you guys are feeling thirsty because we're hooking you up with some summer sangria tonight. And I mean, when you have all your get-togethers and that, one thing people will be asking for is sangria. Now it's originated in Spain, and I mean, when we were there. When I, was, uh, when I was younger, we went to Spain, and let me tell you, I had a little bit when I was there, and I, I have yet to try something just as good as that. I mean, the, the best I've part, been trying. The best part, remember, <laughs> they have these uh, really cool flasks, oh, yeah, with yeah. The t and they come around the table, and they literally pour it in your <laughs> mouth. So, uh, yeah, sangria is beautiful. Oh. It's a real common man's drink, yep. uh, and uh, some really powerful oh, flavors. Yeah. Like, you can see why. Look at some of these ingredients here on a summer hot day. Especially in Spain when they take siestas during the middle of the day, this is what you want. Refreshing ingredients. And that's all we're going to start with is this is an orange. Just any navel orange will work and we're just going to start working this into slices. We're leaving that uh, the rind on because all of those oils are going to get into all the liquid. This is actually a drink that you do want to let macerate overnight if you can 24 hours because all of this fruit it's just going to make its way into the liquid. Yeah, that's beautiful. And the key is when you do slice it thin, uh, if it's big, thick slices, it'll have a little bit of difficulty getting all into all those flavors. Look at that. So it's beautiful to look at. Sangria is so gorgeous. 
And then we're just going to add some lemon here once again, just same uh, thickness of slice here, leaving the rind on again for that oil in the zest. Now we don't want to zest that, uh, that off, we don't want to use a microplane and take that off like you've seen us uh, do before because then you're going to end up with all those little pieces in your drink which you don't want. You want this to be really clean. Add those in. So, have, a look, have a look at this, I'm just going to intro okay, for a second. Yeah. Have a look at the texture of this dough. So that's what you're looking for, it's kind of pasty, kind of, but that's the thickness you're looking for. Because as I pour that in, I want it's almost like, it's really like a muffin batter, mm. or like a simple bread, banana bread oh, or something yeah. like that. That's the texture you're looking for. Sorry, back to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the reason you don't want to add that zest in is because it's going to be all up in the drink and in people's glasses and they're not going to like it. So we're just leaving it right on that lime. And because it's going to sit overnight, all of those oils and flavors are still going to get into that drink. Beautiful. If you can't leave it overnight, that's fine. It's just you're not going to get as many of those fruit flavors infusing with the drink. Well, do you know what I would do? If you can't let it macerate overnight, what you want to do is take some of those and give them a really good squeeze. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. some of the juice in there. So you could maybe do a few like this and then take a few and juice them whole. Yeah. Look at that incredible Look at color. The color there. It's so beautiful. And for last, we're just going to add some strawberries here. Doing them in this presentation, taking the, uh, taking the tip off and then slicing them like this. It's a really nice presentation and it looks like a strawberry. That's one thing you always want to hint to in your drink or food is what is inside the drink or food. So if I cut these strawberries in another fashion that doesn't look like a strawberry, or even people, if you chop them up, yeah, right? people may not know that it is a strawberry, right? Look at all those colors going in. And some of these alcohols that we're going to be adding here, we're going to be doing a red sangria, which is a classic. You can do a white sangria if you're not a big fan of uh, red wine. You just use a Pinot Grigio. But in this case, we're going to use a Pinot Noir or a Merlot, a very light, fruity red wine. Well, that, and you could even use like a, a, a Zinfandel, yeah. or you could use a Rosé. Rose, now, for yeah. those of you who don't know... Uh, rosé, I know guys, rosé feels like a, a very feminine kind of wine, but the yep. reality is that rosé is actually, it's actually from red yep. grapes. So they let the, the, uh, the uh, skins macerate for just about a day, just enough yep. to get a little bit of that flavor out of them, and then it's removed quickly. That's what gives it that beautiful pink pink hue and for summer drinks oh it's they're perfect, perfect. i mean they're it's absolutely so perfect so refreshing yep and so now that we have all our fruit in there we are going to go straight to the uh, red wine to begin with clean my hands up here i thought you were going for the core i was going to say screw cap no no <laughs> <laughs> now hold on a second i have to say something my lovely wife she works so hard <laughs> she gets all these incredible ingredients and i was complaining about this wine i feel really bad because it's called cupcake and I said, how can you give me a bottle of wine for the outdoor chef and call it cupcake? But the truth is, this is a really good California it's okay, wine. Cupcake. It's okay, it'll yeah, you taste, watch it, It'll man. still taste good. <laughs> so we're going to go a full bottle in there. Look at that color. Come on, guys. Oh, man, that looks so good. Oh, yeah. So red wine, Pinot Grigio in. Or not Pinot Green. No, no, this Pinot is uh, Pinot. It's actually a blend. So okay. there's a lot of real. Let's talk a little bit about wines okay, just yeah, for yeah. a second. So, you know, you could get uh, use a Cabernet Sauvignon. You could yep. use a Pinot Noir. You yep. could use uh, a lot of different reds. But the blends are actually really, really nice. Yep. So they're doing so much good work with blends. Two or three uh, grapes that together, they're high notes, low yep. notes, acidity uh, yep. and uh, Create sugar. It creates a beautiful blend. And yep. a lot of times their price is right too. And and you don't need to spend a fortune on uh, red wine to make a beautiful sangria. No, it's no. just got to be really, it's got to yep. taste great. Right time of year, look at the year. I mean, this is from California, and I mean, can you go wrong with California wine? You I can mean, never go wrong with California. No, okay, let's go keep wrong. going. So we're going to add some brandy in here. This is not a classic, but I'm adding this in to bring in some of that apricot flavor. We're going to go in with about probably four ounces of this beautiful brandy. The nice thing about brandy is it really, it, because it's a fortified wine, yep. give you, it gives a drink a real richness. It, yep. gets it gives it a depth of flavor. Yep. It's because it's, uh, it's oak aged, right? Yep. So you get that flavor development that otherwise wouldn't be there. Well, a lot of people look at it and they go, like, they think it's going to have this harsh uh, whiskey type flavor, but actually brandy doesn't at all. It's actually very mild and really uh, flavorful. Very, very mellow. And then we're going to go in with some triple sec, which is purely an orange liqueur to bring in some more of that orange flavor. Going to go in with about four or five ounces of that. 
Roughly. Question. Roughly. <laughs> not yes. A question. Not a question. Um, Ah. Is this Wayne from Texas? <laughs> Wayne, you wait till I get to Texas, man. I'll show you what a cupcake I am. No, sorry. Okay, Wayne. I'm, let's 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 be right, easy. Oh, EOSK, sorry. You hit, <laughs> you hit my cupcake button, You're Wayne. You're talking about somebody from Texas. I think right. You better to He's probably like a giant hog hunter right now. Okay, yep. we better not. Don't mess with Texas. Don't mess with the Everything's car- bigger in don't Texas. Don't mess with the carbon Even icon cupcakes hunters. cupcakes are bigger in Texas. So okay. The carbon icon hunters are serious. That's okay. right. Carbon or icon. carbon icon no. brothers. That's so. right. Okay, sorry. So we're going to add some more of that, that triple car- sec you put in. Yeah. Sorry, Miss, I was talking about Yeah, away. triple sec in, some of that orange flavor going in. Now, your carbonated water. If you're going to let this macerate in the fridge for 24 hours or however long, don't add this in right away. You want to add your carbonated water right before it goes out for service because, obviously, if you put it in the fridge, all your are going to disappear in the fridge overnight. Yeah, now some people use a soda like 7-Up or Sprite or, yep. or Schweppes or, or some type of a ginger ale here. Yep. Some people do. Yep. It's super, super sweet. Yeah. And listen, mineral water actually, it tastes like water, but mineral water actually has really yep. great flavor and it really blends well. And sangria. make sure if you're looking, I mean myself, I like mineral water as opposed to carbonated water because yes. you get that extra level yeah. of flavor. Yeah, absolutely. Like this is mineral water, so you'll tell the difference if you taste them, carbonated water compared to mineral water. Yes? Um, so Mike said, would like to see your take on a Bloody Mary sometime. Mike, Bloody Mary? Bloody Mary? Done. <laughs> Done. Next week. Next <laughs> Mike, week. Bloody Mary. We'll do it. You just did my work for me. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to make up for glo- goading us into the whitetail. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so, yes. Yes, Cindy. And Wayne said, it's all good, brother. Come on to Texas. All right, Wayne. Hey, you Wayne, know we'll Wayne there, you brother. keep saying that every week, but one day... We got your address when we sent you that giveaway. We're just going to show up. That's right. That's <laughs> right, Wayne. We're just going to show up. And Jessica asked, she said she just was able to join. Can you do a quick update on what you're doing tonight? Okay, yeah. thanks, Jess. Yes, absolutely. So Bailey did this incredible uh, green apple and ginger boost. Mm-hmm. So this is for all of you who are out there. You're working out. Yep. You're prepping for the season to come. So he's got this great recipe and uh, it's focused on the mountain op strength there, which is really nice. Yep, post then, workout. Yep, post workout. And then I'm working on these venison ribs. You can All see right. them back here. They're just bathing in that beautiful sauce. We're going to reveal those in a little bit. All and right. right now, and Dakota just made us. We're just sangria. finishing up this sangria here, and I mean, we're just. I was just saying, don't add the carbonation right now until you serve it. So we are actually going to add it, and you'll see how this sangria comes to life. Watch it. And that's why you add this carbonated water, because it just brings that to life. And on a hot summer day, that's what you want. Look at that. Look at those bubbles. Something I really like to do with sangria, too, by the way. There you go, buddy. Thank you. Uh, something I really like to do with sangria is you're thinking you put ice in here. Better that it, it's in the refrigerator, macerating overnight. What you want to do oh, yeah. is you got to put ice in the glass. Yep. So if you put ice in the glass, it won't water it down. And uh, you'll find that the flavor will hold. It'll be it'll be a whole lot better. You got some uh, ice there, okay? So yeah. we're gonna do some. Now, while he's getting those drinks ready, we're gonna take a little cornbread break. Now, this cornbread break has been brought to you by Lodge Cast Iron because we've got this thing preheated and we're ready to fill it up. So all I'm gonna do is literally. And this is what I love about this uh, cast iron pan. Is you can just kind of work your way around the pan. Now, earlier I kind of overfilled them and they puffed up. They're really beautiful. But it's a little on the big side. <laughs> so I'm just going to move this around the pan just like this, just like so. And then I'm going to even these babies out. So I'm literally just going to take, once you get it filled up, and then you just go like this. Okay. Need some more here. And a little bit more here. So I'm, you can see what I'm doing. Now, keep in mind if you want to do this like in a loaf pan, that works fantastic. Uh, if you want to do this uh, like this in this wedge pan, which I love, you can see how, notice when I when I tap on that, how you can see it coming away from the sides. The reason it's doing that is because I have preheated this pan. So I like to use a pan that's slightly preheated. Now, I did pull it out before pour, uh, putting this in because I don't want it to be screaming hot when I when I do. I don't. I want it to start cooking, but I don't want it to overcook. Look at that. Beautiful. So this is something that's really easy to do. Now, if you're at a campsite, um, 
One of the things you can do, uh, because you don't have as much control over the flames, and a lot of times what will happen is you end up getting the top burnt. One of the, What we've done is you do this and then just tent some foil right over top, and it controls that, that heat on top. If any of the flames are licking up on the side, you're not going to get burnt pieces, and this will really allow you to control it. But in this case, now... Uh, we're a huge fan of oh, these yeah. Coyote products. You can see I'm going in. This is this mm -hmm. Coyote smoker. I mean, as a hunter and an outdoorsman, look at that. having it, look, look, have a peek down in there. Look, look at, at those. Hole. Now, I got to tell you something. I preheated this when I did these this first batch. I preheated this baby about mm -hmm. maybe three o'clock this afternoon, mm -hmm. and then all I've done grab a couple chunks of that. Uh, so all we've done is literally put like. Two or three pieces of chunk uh, charcoal lump in, charcoal, lump, yeah. uh, thanks, lump uh, charcoal, and that's all that it takes. So this is now in the center. We want to make sure it's not to the side. We want nice, even cooking, right dead center. I'm going to close this baby up, and we're going to check on that. This temperature will come right up before you know it, and we're going to, we want that at about 300 yeah. degrees, and those will be beautiful golden brown. All right, gentlemen, take a look at this. All right. going to pour some of this. So this is, let's talk this, this yeah. is the key though. The garnish, you know, you've done all the hard work. What you have to do is you gotta finish strong. Oh yeah. And to finish strong, you gotta garnish it. It looks gotta so be beautiful. beautiful. It's gotta be attractive. Look at this. So you take this out to your guests on a hot summer day, they That's are beauty. going to love you. And as this sits in front of them, and as they just keep adding to the same glass, all of that fruit is just going to keep it adding to all of their drink. Look at that. Perfect. You're hired. You are hired. For what? Oh, you are a great mixologist. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is a beauty. Okay, should we try yeah, it? Let's try it. Let's try a little bit. Sorry you're filming there, Bay, but uh, cheers. cheers to you. Cheers. Listen, cheers to you. And here, you know what? It's been uh, it's been 12 weeks. Yep. So it's been a full three months of broadcast from the Outdoor Chef. Yep. We have uh, gone live from our bear hunt. Yep. We have cooked turkey. We've cooked duck. Venison. Venison. Bear. Mule deer. Elk. Black we've, bear. Yep. We've done so much. So this is for you, the viewers at home. Cheers to you. Thank you for watching, all of our loyal viewers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. to you. And thank you for being our loyal viewers. Mm. Mm. Sangria. That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very nice. I love it. Okay, so let's keep going here. We've got, let's, now we're going to work a little bit on the venison. So if you guys, you're going to set this back here out of the way for a second. And let's keep working on the venison. Now, it's time to get a little sticky. Yeah. So this is where this comes into play. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring over this. And Bay, I'm going to get well, you to that in here. Yeah, so what I did with these, this you're going to recognize these. Now, one of the things about venison ribs that you'll notice right off is they don't have nearly as much uh, meat on the bones as, uh, for example, pork, and especially if it's a uh, three- or four-year-old, uh, in particular a three-year-old uh, deer, you're going to find that they're going to have, yeah, there we go, they're, they're going to be a little less meaty, but generally speaking, there's not a ton of meat on those bones. Now... One of the things that I'm going to do this year is I'm going to leave that big loin attached. Uh, when we were, this was the first year we broke down from uh, that we harvested, and uh, so I did make the mistake. I, I really wish I want that time right now. What I want to show you is that tomahawk, the loin on with that beautiful rib. But for us, for tonight, this is how we're going to do it. So you've seen I've done it this way. So I roasted one side completely whole great technique but what we can do is we can also roast it so that we've got each one i'm just going to start covering these up then you can actually help me yeah this, it smells amazing it smells amazing so the one thing about this so literally all you want to do is just get a dry rub all over those and this is something you can do the night before just yeah that's it get them all covered up so it's with this dry rub now that we're going to smoke it because there's not a lot of meat, if we're doing something like a brisket, you know at home you're, you're going to smoke for about an hour. If I smoke these for an hour, there's not going to be any meat left on them. No. So you're going to want to get a really nice rolling smoke, about 20 minutes, and that's perfect. And that will give you this kind of result. 
So what I'm going to do, Bay, is you keep working on that, and I'm going to move. I'm going to grab uh, grab your cutting board here. I'm going rib by rib here. Rib by rib. That's that's exactly what you want to do. You Make sure get they're a ton fully of flavor covered in there. If you guys could smell this right now, it's honestly unbelievable. This spice rub, all those different spices, and especially after you toast them, just releases all that oil, and all that oil is just going to soak right into these venison ribs, and they're going to taste absolutely amazing. All right, Mop so let's, up. yeah, you get that done. So that's the key with a dry rub. Get the dry rub on and let that sit. The easiest way to do it, we want to show you this, but you know, if you want to keep your hands clean, keep your tabletop clean, get yourself a big Ziploc bag, put them in the Ziploc bag, put the dry rub in and give, put some air in it and seal it up tight. Give it a really good shake and that way you'll get coverage all over the ribs and that's what's going to get really even flavor. So let's bring this baby out. And I'm going to save, of course, this is going to be, but you know what I need? I need a small bowl. Small bowl? Yeah, small bowl, because what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to, I'm going to cut these apart. Kind of one by one here. But I need a bowl for the, uh, for the sauce, because we want to make like a mop out of this. Look at that smoke ring there. So, yeah, you can see that smoke ring. It's a light smoke ring. Just gonna... So this is what I'm talking about here. You've got a really nice, you've got some beautiful smoke. You can see that it's completely cooked. And this is one of the things you really want to make sure. Uh, for a really good smoke, you want to make sure that it will come off the bone, that it's going to be pull apart, but that it's not going to be completely fall apart. So literally what I'm going to do, we're going to save this so we can do a nice hero shot so we can post this. But I want you to see the color and the texture of this sauce that I'm going to put on. Yeah. Just So that. this is a combination of brandy and molasses and, molasses and, brown, sugar. and brown sugar. We got two questions here. You guys go ahead. Mom. Justin says, I hate watching this while I'm hungry. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that's is. right, buddy. That's right. Um, so always when you're cooking, uh, that's what we've been saying. And I know that uh, one of one of you out there, I, I'm I'm almost certain, right, Dakota? Uh, fat, it's a U.S. military term, Slow right? Slow, smooth, smooth, fast. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. But what you, when you're in the kitchen, let me tell you something. That's the key. You want to, first of all, you got to slow things down. And then that rhythmic movement you get into, yeah. whether you're making a health food drink, whether you're making a beautiful drink for, uh, for summer, yeah. or you're making incredible smoked venison ribs, oh, yeah. you know, this is the thing that will separate your cuisine. Mm -hmm. So you're taking the time. Let's talk about the things that we take the time yeah. to do right. Yeah. So with Bailey making this great drink, so the Mountain Ops on its own, beautiful, totally functional. Yeah. But adding that ginger, which is like a therm, it's like adding fire in your uh, in your uh, loins. Yeah. And then that beautiful fiber from oh, the green yeah. apples. Yes, uh, Megan. Um, so Scott just asking, uh, he says that's why it burnt right, because of the sugar. So this is not okay. burn in any way. Yeah, so yeah, just so you know, uh, the ribs are actually perfectly cooked. Yep. It, we used the dark molasses, dark brown sugar, and honey, so it's perfectly glazed yep. and perfectly done. Yeah, and we it's, don't do that right till the end, right? Yeah, you don't do that right to the end. So let's go through. No, it's perfect. Uh, <laughs> so let me go through that entire process. Yep. So let's start with this. So you've got your raw venison. Yep. You're going to start with a dry rub. Now this dry rub is going to go onto my smoker. I'm going to smoke for 20 minutes. When it's done smoking, I come over and I've got a piece of aluminum foil. Mm -hmm. I put molasses, I put honey, and I put brown sugar, and I put some of that beautiful, uh, brandy. I was going to say bourbon, brandy. brandy. Or bourbon. Or, or bourbon. bourbon. Bourbon's good too. <laughs> and I lay the ribs out. I fo uh, close it up in the foil pack, as yep. you saw. And what happens is it begins to essentially braise. So any of the connective tissue, any of the fats, anything that's kind of enveloping that beautiful rib yep. is going to melt into that beautiful sauce. And then what you're left with is you're literally left with a perfectly smoked rib 
But then you've got a literally you've got a barbecue sauce yep. that's yep. made at the same time. Yep. So it's combining the principles of smoking with a little bit of grilling yep. because you're getting that grilled flavor, yep. and then you're wrapping that all up by braising them slowly. Yep. Um, so anyway, so that's, but thank you for bringing that, yeah, up that that's, point. Yeah, that's why it doesn't burn, it's just that's doing that slow and right at the end. Yeah, and at the end, when you do that, you're doing 225 degrees, and I literally, I just watch it. It takes about yep. an hour, and it just melts and melts yep. and melts, yep. and you're left with that beautiful gravy, uh, that, not gravy, but beautiful sauce at the end. Yep. So we've got some really powerful recipes here. Hey, let's talk about the recipes that we've done uh, in the past. You got yep, them there? I got them so here. one of the things that I want to direct your attention to, uh, for the Outdoor Chef, we've been broadcasting, as we said, for 12 weeks. Yep, and we these are the recipes. Read them nice and slow. Yeah, so uh, the first recipe we did was wild turkey cottage pie, cool. which uh, was the first was oh. honestly one of the best. That was, that was one of my favorite. Yep. Uh, wild turkey and dumplings. That was, yeah, that was a good one. And the nice thing about that is it allowed us to use the uh, breast yeah. for the cottage pie. And then the legs. And yeah. the smoked legs for the um, for the dumplings. So that yeah. was really beautiful. Uh, we did Then we did a stuffed whitetail backstrap with a horseradish cream, oh, which was yeah. really that good. Was that, good. One. that was yeah. delicious. Uh, grilled out burgers on a buttery country roll. That was Those perfect. Those country rolls are, if you have time so, to go back to that recipe, that's the best <laughs> bread you'll ever have. Yeah, yeah if you want to make your own bread, these these are the perfect rolls. And it's so yeah. easy. Yeah, then we did a mule deer roast. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then uh, black bear bolognese with fresh pasta. That was good if you ever want to learn how to make fresh pasta. That's a really good oh, video yeah. for that. Yep. And uh, cured wild salmon with mushroom and peas. Yep. It was delicious. Mm. Barbecued wild venison Philly cheesesteak. My favorite. Yep. Yeah, Roasted wild awesome. duck breast barbecue pizza, which was another good They're all good. Like yeah. Keep saying, <laughs> yeah. That's okay. They're Black all good. bear fillet with roasted vine tomatoes bear f and bear fat potatoes and collard oh, greens. Bear fat and that, potatoes. And that, they we, and that right. one, you got to check that out. We yep. showed you how to render down the bear fat and then fry the potatoes yep. in it. Yep. It was awesome. And we did okay. uh, beer batter pickerel with fresh cut fries, which was a really good one. And then we have tonight. Yeah, so tonight, again, just yep. this recap has been great. Uh, it's a great way to take, uh, you know, a lot of times with the venison ribs, I've seen yep. most guys, they just trim them out um, and, and just keep it for ground. ground You're not going to get that much, in my opinion, nope. uh, for ground. Why not hang on to them this year? Yep. So whitetail season is coming up. This time, when you take your whitetail and listen, when we when we get one, we're going to show you this. We're going to butcher it, keeping that loin on. Oh, yeah. What you end up with is a, <laughs> about a dozen tomahawk steaks. And this is going to be a beautiful way to enjoy that kind of pick off the bone, beautiful oh, yeah. goodness, yeah. and then having that beautiful loin to go along with it. And I mean, alongside all those recipes, let's see if I can remember them. We got, we've added some drinks to the last four weeks. Right, right, right. right. A, a bourbon hard cider, that thing was sick. Was you know, delicious. that was so good. And then oh, we yeah. had a, uh, and then we have this sangria here. And then the other week we had a hardened lemon iced tea. That was That sick. was delicious. And then something I call the Big Easy, which is a play on a Sazerac. Sazerac. Straight yep. out of New Orleans, that thing was so that brings me to, uh, we're almost ready to wrap this up, uh, so we have to say some thanks here. So first of all, thank you to our friends and family. We've got a great group of people <laughs> out here who are supporting us, egging us on. Yep. Uh, big thanks to my friend, uh, my best friend. I've known him since uh, I think maybe I was nine or maybe even eight years old for, uh, for letting us set up in his backyard. And, uh, and thanks to you viewers at home. Um, just, yes, Cindy, quick question. Dessert is coming. Dessert is coming. Jeremiah, that's, great, that's, great thing. We'll do a dessert next week, guaranteed. Yeah. All you gotta do is just grab some icing, make some icing, and throw it on that cornbread. That's, that's right. That'll change your world. I'll that's do, your dessert. I'll do a cornbread bre uh, bread pudding. I'll do a cheat day dessert. Yeah. I got that chocolate caramel stuff from Mountain Ops. That's a good I, idea. I want to oh, make yeah, some caramel good. from that's scratch, good. and oh yeah, it's gonna be good. And listen, our last thank you goes to each and every one of our sponsors. You can check yep. them out in the rolling credits. Without those sponsors, this would not be possible. Yeah. We encourage you to go to the Outdoor Chef Facebook page, the Fearless Outdoors Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, they're two different stories. Outdoor Chef is all about wild to table. Yep. Fearless Outdoors is all about hunting, angling, and doing all kinds Fear of crazy stuff. Getting, getting your wild to the table. Exactly. <laughs> getting your wild to the table. That's true. And don't forget about that giveaway, guys. Lodge Cast yes. Iron yes. giving you guys that beautiful Dutch oven with the tripod hanger yeah. for when you like, get out there in the woods. Share, comment. Yeah. Yep. Like, Let share, us know comment. why you want it. Like I said, 
you know, we got a season open. You don't yep. get it that night, but you got small gable. Question? Perfect. Yes. Comment? A lot of comments tonight. Wait, oh, yeah. cornbread with icing chased with cupcake wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So Wayne said, uh, uh, cornbread with icing chased with cupcake wine. Thank you, Wayne. Yes, uh, Megan. Um, so Dave said there's a tremendous amount of fat in deer ribs. And that yes. And the only part of the animal that he doesn't eat because it's too difficult to remove the fat. Yeah. But he asked, do you eat the fat on the ribs? Uh, you know what? My experience is a great <laughs> question about the fat on the ribs. That's why I so, work out. So here's the thing. Now, now there's a, the, one of the hard and fast things about hunting is there is no one rule. There's a number of yep. things I'm going to talk about here. Number one, uh, so his question was about eating the fat. I've noticed incredible difference where the animal grows. Oh, so yeah. we, where we are from here in southern Ontario, right near the U.S. border, uh, we have animals that are essentially raised on, on corn and, and they're soybeans. Ba they're basically cows. They're like cows. They're cows <laughs> with beautiful antlers and run yeah. really fast and yeah. are very elusive. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you go it's up north. And I'm telling you, these things are sharp they're, as they're a tack. They're what they call bush deer, and I mean, they, oh, they're they, so smart. They taste completely different, obviously, because their diet is just absolutely completely, completely different. But the different. fat on these babies down here is oh, really good. Just like beef it's fat. Butter. Oh yeah, I, I, I literally wouldn't be without it. But it's a great point, and yep. honestly, the fat is something we've been testing. So we had the same issues with uh, discussions about bear fat. So what we've done, we've rendered bear fat. And we're testing at three months, at six months, at nine months, and then yep. again at 12. We should be able to hold it safely through 12 months. Yep. The same as with the uh, white-tailed deer. But we are actually testing this as we go. Yep. So the beautiful thing about this story is it's yet to be told in yep. some yep. cases. Continual. Yep. Continual. Yep. So you know what we do? Actually, I'll, I'll say one more thing. Yep. Uh, we do a lot of restaurant consultations yep. because we're professional chefs. The first thing that I always tell people to do uh, we were going to make these burgers at this one beautiful little restaurant, mm -hmm. and then we are going to start with a great grand recipe. I said, you know what, let's taste it first. The best thing to do is, Mike, who asked that? Sorry? Dave. 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 The best thing to do is literally take a hot skillet, and whatever you want to test, put it on that skillet, no salt, no pepper, nothing. Try a little piece of it, taste, taste it. it. Learn what that tastes like. See what and, it needs. And yeah. see what it needs. And in some cases, it doesn't need anything. No. And, you know, in your case, depending on where you're harvesting your deer, maybe the, maybe the fat, in fact, maybe yep. it really doesn't taste good. Yep. Uh, but I can tell you where these are, <laughs> the fat tastes, tastes really good. good. <laughs> but there's delicious. no hard and fast rule. I mean, what you like, you like. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. That's you right. Know, don't eat anything that you don't like. Don't be forced into it, you know. We're here to try and make it taste yep. better if we can, right? If we can, if we can. <laughs> so tonight you learned that brilliant spice rub. You can make your own spice rub. It'll turn into a beautiful sauce. You got this big, powerful boost drink that's now gone. A beautiful I'm sangria. Yeah. Okay, it's gone now. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, and what we do is we give you uh, brilliant ways to, to be able to enjoy wild to table it's a it's a family story it's myself my two yeah. boys uh my wife and and grandkids and daughters we got uh, and the exciting thing is we've got some girls coming in the woods this fall my wife my daughter and my daughter-in-law they'll be taking their first white tail their first yep. turkey it's going to be very very exciting exciting for them and exciting for us to continue the story of our heritage conservation yep. so as i was saying uh, at the end uh, let's make sure to uh, say thanks to all the sponsors. Yeah. Check them out in the rolling credits that are coming up. These are the people that are in our, at our heart. They're locked arms with us. They help us every day because they want to give you the best products that are in the outdoors yeah. world. So for Bailey and for Dakota, uh, thank you and uh, yeah. have thank a great you. night. Yeah, we'll see good. you next week for Surefire Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Now we get to eat the room. Now we get to eat the room. Look at this beautiful spice rub. I'm going to gently lay this down inside the pan, sauteing it so that both sides are nice and golden brown, and then I'll pop it in the oven to finish it up.
You'll notice I haven't used any eggs or breadcrumbs. The proteins will naturally bind when cooked. I'm gonna keep this seasoning simple. Just a little bit of salt, some pepper. Simple. I wanna taste this elk. I don't want to hide any of the flavors. Right. I want to taste now, it. I we interrupt this broadcast together, because I, I have to show you some flavor. cornbread. Come over here. You got to see this. So literally, I went over and I had a look at this. I want you to see what you can do at home. Have a look at this result. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. You see why I had to come back? Now, listen. You have the Collins cornbread secret. I just, I got to tell you, my family is, some of them are from Kentucky. So they'd be, I'd be doing them great, great, making them very proud. One last look at that, and then we'll say goodnight. Thank you. I want to taste it. Incredible finish. Is there anything simpler than cooking in one pan? Whole roasting this line caught wild trout with all of these vegetables for me is the most perfect way to honor this incredible fish. This is my first black bear. We're here hunting on public land. And let me tell you, this is a night I'm never going to forget. What the old timers taught me, it came true tonight. And we got this beautiful, beautiful black bear. no distance between the trigger, the string, my arrow, and that beautiful, beautiful buck. Oh, 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 oh. The time is now or never. Oh, 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 oh. Cause nothing lasts forever. 